Hi everybody, welcome to this series of short lectures on applied statistics. Today we shall talk about two special kinds of variables. The first kind is called the Bernoulli variables, and then we shall talk about the second kind of variables that are called binomial variables. The binomial variables are derived from the Bernoulli variables. Together, these are two very important variables in probability and statistics, and as we shall see in subsequent lectures, a lot depends on understanding these variables. So let's get going. Suppose you're trying out your luck. In probability theory, every time you try to do something where the outcome is not certain is called a chance experiment or a random process. Now suppose there are only two possible outcomes, like, like tossing a coin. And one outcome, say heads, is a success for you, while the other is a failure for you. Then as you toss the coin, you try your luck. Each such trial where the outcome can have one of only two possible values is called a Bernoulli trial. For example, four coin tosses make four Bernoulli trials. Note Bernoulli trials are quite common in life. For example, a train may arrive on time or not, your computer's hard disk fails or not, or a project completes in time or not. To study such probabilistic phenomena, we must first understand a very important concept. And that concept is a random variable. Sometimes a coin toss produces a head. At other times, it produces a tail. So the outcome of a chance experiment varies. Different outcomes have different chances of happening. Therefore, in probability theory, a chance experiment is represented by a random variable. So whenever you see a random variable, you must immediately think that it signifies a chance experiment. In other words, a random process where the outcome is not certain. Random variables are typically represented by capital letters like X or Y. Depending on the outcome of a chance experiment, a random variable can have different values. For example, if the outcome of experiment is heads, then x equals heads, otherwise x equals tails. Now if there are multiple chance experiments, then we represent them by multiple random variables such as x1, x2, and so on. Sometimes we can do multiple Bernoulli trials in succession. Doing n Bernoulli trials in succession is called a Bernoulli process. For example, we toss a coin multiple times and we want to see two successes. Essentially, the question is, what is the probability of observing two successes? Now assume that this is a fair coin. That is, the probability of, of observing a head equals the probability of observing a tail that is one half. Now two heads may appear in this sequence, that is head, head, and a tail. But because it is a fair coin, other sequences are likely. That is, we can see a tail, head, head, or a head, tail, and head. In each case, the number of heads equals two. As you can guess, it is not necessary that only two heads will appear all the time. In fact, the number of heads can be as small as zero or as big as three. Notice our interest this time is not in individual heads or tails, but the total number of heads in a Bernoulli process. That is n Bernoulli trials where n equals three. Now x that e now x equals the number of heads or successes and x is uncertain because it results from a random process that is a Bernoulli process. Now how do we represent a random process in probability theory? Yes, we use random variables to represent the random processes. Therefore x is a random variable and because it counts the number of successes in a Bernoulli process, it has a special name that is, a binomial random variable. 
To get back to our earlier question, we want to measure the probability of getting two, success, two successes. Since we observe two successes three times, whereas the total number of distinct outcomes is eight, our desired probability is three over eight. Note the total number of possible outcomes is called the sample space. We also note that because the, the sample space is, count, is countable, okay, that is we can count the size of the sample space, there are only eight different possible outcomes. So we call x is a discrete variable. So here are some examples of bino binomial variables. Suppose we want to measure how many trains arrive on time, we try out three trains, or we can try the same train three times. So the number of Bernoulli trials, that is n, equals 3. Hence, the sample space size equals 8. Similarly, if we have a cluster of computers with many hard disks, we want to know how often they fail. Suppose we have 8 hard disks, then the number of Bernoulli trials n equals 8, Hence, the sample space size equals 256. Likewise, if we are monitoring two projects and want to count how many, how many will finish on time, then the number of Bernoulli trials, that is n, equals 2. Hence, the sample space size equals 4. So at that, we shall conclude this lecture. And in the next lecture, we shall discuss a very important probability distribution that relies on Bernoulli and binomial variables. See you there.